Hello everyone, a very very good evening to all of you. Welcome to the Study IQ IAS English. My name is Abhishek Singh and I welcome you all in this third part of our Science Current Affairs for UPSC and this session is Science This Week and let us start the session with the top five news of the science which were in the round in this week. However, before that, let me tell you about something which is very very important for not just you but for everyone else who is going to watch it that actually if you are a student who is having a dream of attempting and clearing the UPSC examination in the next year or if you are a working professional who has taken the break and have the time of one year to crack this examination. Now this is the news for all of you that we are actually launching our new batches in the English medium from the 19th of June 2023 at a very very subsidized cost that is of just rupees 29,999 rupees. Given that you have to use this code ASR live and then you can access our prelims to interview batch the very very important to note this P2I batch here you will be given support and guidance along with the live classes from the preparation of your prelims examination up to your interview guidance. So, what are you exactly waiting for? You can get yourself enrolled very quickly. But now let's get started to the session. So, here the first session, the first news in fact, that is what is transcranial magnetic stimulation? Okay, everyone. So, recently there was a news and uh, the news was regarding a technology which is known as the transcranial magnetic stimulation. It was authorized for the you know, medicinal testing way back in 2008. But since then, since then, it was still undergoing a lot of questions whether this should be used or this should not be used. So, what is this transcranial magnetic stimulation? Let me tell you that this is basically a non-invasive medical technology in which the magnetic pulses, magnetic pulses, they are applied non-invasively to the scalp, to the scalp region. As you can see in this picture here, this is basically the electromagnetic coil and this is a human skull as you can see, right? And this is gripping the human skull and providing, providing the you know, magnetic impulses. All right, everyone. And if we are talking about the magnetic impulses, as we all are aware that uh, providing the magnetic impulse that can stimulate the brain. So, this is having a purpose to stimulate the brain, to reverse the brain changes and to bring about the rapid relief to severely depressed patients. So, basically, this is an alternative method. It is a non-invasive non-medicinal method of treating the depression and as we are, are we are we are all aware that depression has become it has become a havoc in the current scenario current setup of the lifestyle so this technique is basically used as a non-invasive modulate in the right non-invasive modulate for the cortical activities for the cortical cortical activities regulation. What is the cortical part? Cortical part is basically the uh, no, part of the brain that regulates our emotions, that regulates our functioning of the emotions. So here, the transcranial magnetic stimulation that is basically that is basically based upon a phenomena of the electromagnetic that electromagnetic mutual induction. You might have read this phenomena in the school books of science. Okay. What is this uh, electromagnetic induction? Basically, it was reported by Faraday and this uh, phenomena of electromagnetic induction is actually responsible to generate an uh, electric field as well. Generate an electric field as well. Okay. So, here if we talk about the electromagnetic induction, so in 1985, the Anthony Barker and his colleagues developed the first modern transcranial magnetic stimulation device. But here, if we are talking about the RTMS, that is the reverse transcranial magnetic stimulation devices, they generate the brief electromagnetic pulses via insulated coils placed over the scalp. So, these magnetic pulses non-invasively modulate the cortical activity of the brain. All right. So, it is like a principle that when we are having a, you know, 
a coiled form of the electric right electrical conductor then the rotate the, then the basically the rotating electrical current that generates the magnetic field or the rotating magnetic field generates the electrical electrical field so here the funda is to provide the to provide the you know rotated field of electromagnetic coils through which the insulated coils are placed and through which the current is passed which produces the magnetic field on our cranial nerves on our uh, on our cranial region and that leads to the that leads to the reverse functioning of the brain or leads to the treatment of the depression related habits okay now if we talk about the development of this so in 2008 the us food and drug administration that actually approved the transcranial transcranial magnetic stimulation as the uh, treatment for the clinical depression and this was based on the following principle that is a conducting medium such as the brain is adjacent to the magnetic field a current will be induced in the conducting medium okay so as we can see a magnetic field is there and the secondary secondary thing that is the conducting medium like brain so conducting medium and magnetic field that means it will induce a current it will induce a current in the conducting medium that is the brain that is the thing that i already told to you all right so here what happens that electromagnetic coil is placed on the scalp passing intense electrical pulses in the coil that produces the powerful magnetic field about 2 tesla which results in the current flow in the brain tissue and that causes the depolarization of the brain cells depolarization means what suppose the brain cells are polarized what is the meaning of polarization their their tuning is in a particular direction their way of their way of orientation is is in a particular direction so it is like uh, continuously in the same state of mind suppose you are depressed or suppose you are uh, feeling lethargic so continuously you tend to be in the same state of mind that is when the brain is considered to be polarized the cells of the brain that is neurons obviously they are considered to be polarized so if the stimulation occurs more quickly than the once per second it is called as the fast rtms okay the rtms can stimulate the specific brain region such as the sensory or the motor areas to evoke the corresponding sensory or the motor responses okay sensory nerves or the motor nerves you might have heard the names those who are not from the science background let me tell in the very simple words sensory nerves or sensory part of the brain is that part which regulates your sensory organs okay where where you basically cannot you basically cannot control the feeling for example suppose if you are uh, you know watching something your eyes are there you can control the vision through the mechanical movement but the mechanical movement in the body like uh, i am moving the hands or uh, the eyelids are moving okay so these things are basically possible because of the motor nerves motor nerves and what is the sensory nerves where we have the sensory functions which provides us the stimulation our entire body is having these two types of the nerves for example i am touching something so the sensation of that touch goes to my brain tells me that what is it exactly it it is a hot or it is cold that is with the help of the sensory nerve okay and at the same time suppose if i am touching the something and it is very very hot so i will just immediately remove my hands so this motion of the hand muscle is because of the motor nerves okay so that is what i am trying to tell you that these are the basic areas in the brain which are responsible for such such type of action now it can also interfere with the ongoing brain activity and act as a brief virtual lesion recently the researchers have developed accelerated reverse right transcranial uh, stimulations right basically and these protocols are related to the rtms okay so these transcranial magnetic stimulations they are basically performed under the set of guidelines and 
these guidelines you know these protocols you know have been developed and in the treatment sessions which usually last for the three minutes only so such protocols are also called as the intermittent theta burst stimulation okay so these are the terminologies upsc may ask the questions in the prelims examination all right or suppose in the mains examination there is a question related to the related to the developments in the treatment of the depression related issues in the society there you can mention about the treatment methodology which is told here in the class that is the rtms what is r the reverse and tms what is that tms transcranial magnetic stimulation okay everyone so this is useful for your gs3 as well as your prelims examination now moving to the next point here second news is that us will send the depleted uranium munitions to ukraine despite military health and environmental effects so usa has offered to send the to send the depleted uranium munitions to ukraine in order to counter the continuous russian uh, attacks over the ukrainian over the ukrainian artillery so biden administration has agreed to provide the ukraine with the depleted uranium shells basically to equip their m1a1 abram tanks britain has already delivered the tanks to the uranium equipped with the depleted uranium shells here what is the significance basically this has got two significance one the depleted uranium if we are aware about the depleted uranium munitions we must understand the meaning of this and we should also look into the reasons behind such type of offers so first of all if we talk about the depleted uranium munitions they were developed in the 1970s first they are not the nuclear weapons and do not produce a nuclear explosion however <coughs> sorry due to the use of the depleted uranium as we all are aware that uranium is basically having even after the use in the you know you, uh, nuclear reactors or the use in the you know arsenals uranium has still got a very long radioactive life right so using the du munitions that can expose the soldiers or the civilians to the uranium which could be which could be radioactive all right so that is basically the biggest risk now if we talk about the uranium so what is this uh, depleted uranium all about so naturally uranium occurs in three different isotopes uranium 234 235 and 238 however the depleted uranium about which we are talking that is basically uranium 238 right now but it also has got the small amounts of the other isotopes particularly particularly the radioactive uranium 235 uranium 235 so this is the fissile material which is used in the nuclear weapons as well remember and this depleted uranium is actually radioactive but yes definitely this is 40% less radioactive as compared to the natural uranium and at the same times it is 1.7 times more dense than the lead remember lead is actually one of the heavy metals as we all are aware okay so this is even denser than the lead thus providing a very immense defensive capacities against all the types of all the types of the invasions all the type of the attacks however if this is used instead of the lead as the mortar or as the bullet then it can pierce through it can pierce through any particular shield which is present on the opponent's tanks or the opponent's you know uh, crafts or the vehicles anything can be penetrated with the help of the depleted uranium because it is even even denser than the lead <coughs> so eventually the advanced tanks nowadays they they use the depleted uranium in their armors to protect against the armor piercing munitions so there are the armor piercing munitions such bullets are there which can protect the armor or the defensive coat of the tanks 
so the advanced nations which are militarily very advanced they use this depleted uranium coatings as you can see here in this particular diagram the depleted uranium coating is present over here and therefore it simply defends is simply defends the entire engine setup of the tank and that's why the tank is very much safe even during the attack all right so this is going to be utilized against the Russian armies which are continuously firing on the Ukrainian tanks obviously and the Ukrainian tanks they do not possess this uh, quality of uh, having the DU armors and probably it would be giving a help to the Ukraine. However, the second purpose actually having the radioactive elements in the army is never supported by any you know civilized world or any type of uh, aware groups of the citizens so that's why on the one side uk and us are helping the ukraine on the other side they are reducing this uh, dangerous presence in their own army so that is like you know dumping the partially radioactive substances to the opponents now the third news basically sorry this is not the third one this is basically the comparison how depleted uranium shells work the work basically the working methodology is exactly same here you can see the depleted uranium right shell fired by the main battle tank okay as projectile leaves the gun barrel the sabot casing falls away leaving the dart like penetrator so this penetrator is basically made up of the this penetrator is basically made up of the du that is depleted uranium right so du penetrator is basically 1.7 times denser than the lead and sharpens itself as it moves through the armor remember that so basically this is more than 20 percent more than 20 percent better effective than the tungsten okay better than the tungsten here if we talk about uh, the third point <coughs> on hitting the solid object such as the side of the tank the kinetic energy of the dense uranium penetrator is released punching through the armor punching through the armor so this depleted uranium can be utilized in two different things the first to act as the safeguard for the regular tanks or to act as the penetrator against the armored tanks if the enemy's army is having that okay so ukraine will be getting ukraine will be getting the du penetrators du penetrators to destroy the russian tanks completely all right so that is about this the du penetrator now the next news that is important here because the right if we talk about the problems the one of the major problems in the modern world that is not poverty and employment or anything else in the scientific world the biggest problem is to tackle this space debris you can see our earth such a beautiful planet does not look naturally as we see in the maps or as we see in the documentaries it actually looks something like that the scattered masses of uh, the planet you know scattered masses of the satellites scattered masses of the equipments space you know projectile all these things space projected uh, object objects etc all these things have been thrown into the space and they are still looming around they are still you know having the danger to fall or to collide with some sort of uh, uh, currently operated currently operated space equipment so the biggest problem is basically the growing space debris so here the figures from the nasa's orbital debris program office that paint a pretty grim picture of our planet's orbit as of january 2022 because the amount of the materials orbiting our planet exceeds 9000 metric ton of the materials they are continuously orbiting around our planet more than 25000 objects they are larger than 10 centimeters 5 lakh particles are between 1 to 10 centimeters and there are more than 100 million particles whose size exceeds 1 millimeter now you must be thinking that why am i being so specific about it because the space contains nothing where there is the void there should be absolute void only 
the planets only the natural objects are there and they, they are they are not in the size of uh, millimeters even the dust particles don't exist in the space deep space particularly all right so we can say that we can say that whatever extra is there that is because of the human interventions okay not just that if we talk about uh, the related guidelines which are currently aimed as released by the world economic forum these guidelines are targeted to set a behavioral response regarding the post mission disposal okay what is the post mission disposal suppose if there is a satellite launched in a particular orbit so there must be a definite life of that satellite so what after the life completion okay so the states or the countries which are particularly the members of the world economic forum they can actually give the undertakings that if they are launching a low orbit satellite for example then after the uh, suppose a set life of 5 years what should be the next stage that they would be taking to dispose their to dispose their space satellite okay so there should be a common guideline about this particular thing then avoiding the collisions of the different satellites now the different countries are throwing a lot of objects in the space obviously in the form of the satellites sometimes also in the form of the capsules or the projected uh, you know projected uh, debris are also there so there are chances that those projected debris they could collide with the working satellites so how to avoid that or if there is any chance or any possibility that is uh, you know that may lead to such type of collision what should be the concern step of uh, prevention in such case that is also given under the guideline then data sharing and the traffic management <coughs> now this is a very very important part usually the nations are not supposed to share their data as far as the crucial informations are concerned regarding the space programs however at least there are the mandatory informations related to the release date related to the positioning related to the uh, functions and related to related to the other utilities if there are possible you know so all these things must be given in the prior hand it must be given completely to the setup right to the setup of the agencies which may contain the different countries or different agencies for example suppose uh, if there is a setup established by uh, the european space agency <coughs> nasa then isro right so these three space agencies they would be sharing the informations related to their you know satellite projections or related to their launches of the space vehicles all these things long term goals now the guidelines would also include the long term goals that how do the states think that these space debris could be eliminated could be removed from their current position and how are they exactly planning in the long term to tackle this problem of the space debris so meeting this goal of meeting the goal of uh, tackling the space debris that is also to be discussed and to be determined under the common guidelines to all the members okay everyone so i think you are all very well clear about the four parameters or the four norms regarding the establishment of the guidelines these guidelines are basically you know released by world economic forum however it has to be seen that up to which extent are they followed now as you can see this is the exact picture released by nasa and this is how our earth looks if we can just observe it now moving further okay to the next news that is the phosphorus a vital element for the life that is found on the saturn's icy moon right that is enceladus okay so what is this enceladus enceladus is the sixth largest moon of the planet saturn and that planet saturn is having a very beautiful ring around us around it we all are aware about that so this is basically present on the ring number e ring number e okay 
and this is the sixth largest as I told you. Remember all these points, these are very very important points. So here the discovery was based on the data collected by the NASA's Cassini spacecraft, the first to orbit Saturn during its 13 year landmark exploration of the gaseous giant planets. Okay, so from 2004, Cassini was launched in 2004, it functioned up to 2017. In the 13 years, it collected lots and lots of data and then from that data we have a conclusion that phosphorus, that is basically one of the six essential elements which are required for sustaining the life anywhere in the world or anywhere in the universe. So, phosphorus is basically present on that moon. Okay. So, how have we decided that the phosphorus is present? Basically, <coughs> the Enceladus ice grains, they contain a rich assortment of the minerals and complex organic compounds including the ingredients for the amino acids associated with the life. So, what is this uh, ice grains? You can see this image from NASA, it indicates that the surface of the, right, surface of this uh, satellite of Saturn, it actually throws out the spouts, throws out the spouts of the ice grains, ice grains from the surface of this particular satellite. Okay. So, as we can see that Enceladus, it is icy planet and it uh, throws away the, you know, throws away the particles of the ice in the space. From those collected particles, it has been op uh, observed that phosphorus might be present or phosphorus is present in the, in the projected ice. Okay. So, this is the first time this essential element has been discovered in an, o right, in an ocean beyond the earth. So, apart from the earth, we have never ever been able to recover or to uh, collect the samples where phosphorus might be, might be present. But this is the first time that we have actually got such samples. Now, if we observe the other things like phosphorus, why is it so important that we are studying this in the news? Because phosphorus, it is a fundamental part of the structure of the DNA. It is a fundamental part of the structure of the cell membrane. And at the same time, at the same time, you might have heard about the, you might have heard about the ATP molecules. ATP molecules in the science, you might have heard about that. Right? So, adenosine triphosphate. Okay? Triphosphate. Adenosine triphosphate. So, phosphorus is basically present in all the type of the life forms as the energy carrying molecules that is ATP, that is the ATP, alright. So, this is why when phosphorus is there, there are possibilities that there might be the existence of the DNAs or existence of the something similar which is uh, carrying the life, okay. So, these six chemical elements are considered essential for the life such as carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen and sulphur, okay. Carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen and sulphur and phosphorus, that is the sixth one which is present here. Now, if we talk about the Enceladus, if we talk about the Enceladus, so this is a 1 by 7th of the size of the Earth's moon and this is the sixth largest among the Saturn's 146 known natural satellites, alright. So, apart from Europa, apart from Europa, this has become another major candidate for the possibility of the presence of water and Europa belongs to which planet? Europa is the satellite of which planet? Europa is the satellite of Jupiter. Okay. Titan, which planet? Titan is the satellite of the Saturn. So, these are few famous satellites which are having the chances of the presence of ice or any other form of the water or any other form of the essential elements for life. Now, the question that could be asked from this particular topic might be connected directly to the prelims. In the prelims, they can give a couple of statements like uh, Europa is the moon, uh, suppose recently, you know, recently the moon of the solar system named Enceladus was in the news. Consider the following about the moons of our solar system. Statement 1. Titan is the largest moon 
among all the planets. Second statement, Titan is the moon of the Jupiter. Third statement, Europa is the largest moon of Saturn. Fourth statement, Saturn has the maximum number of the satellites, natural satellite. Now you have to tell that uh, one statement is correct or two statements are correct or three statements of these are correct or four, all of them are correct. So that is something, you know, type of question that can be asked. Okay. Now if we talk about the next news, so Hubble captures a jellyfish galaxy 700 million light years away. Hubble telescope has always been making news and UPSC is a very fond of asking the questions from the you know astronomy as well as from the astrophysics part so they can actually tackle this particular they can actually you know capture this particular information in the form of a future question so what is the information nasa released this hubble image showcasing the jellyfish galaxy jo206 as it trails across the universe about 700 million light years away from our planet okay so basically there are few terms there are few terms which are very very important the, the term that is a constellation Aquarius, the term that is jellyfish, right, jellyfish galaxy. So, what is the meaning of the galaxy and what is the meaning of constellation? Galaxy is actually the you know, accumulation of the billions of stars having a particular center and the arms moving around that center. Whereas, what is the constellation? Constellation is basically a specific setup, a geometrical arrangement of the stars in a particular pattern that is called constellation. Group of a few stars geometrically positioned in a particular pattern. Okay. For example, Ursa Major, for example, Great Beer, that is all, no, they are all the constellations. Now, if we talk about the jellyfish galaxies, so they resemble their marine namesake like having the long tentacles of the bright star formations which trails the main disk of the galaxy just like a jellyfish tentacles are present. So here as you can see the picture, jellyfish like you know it just looks like that and then there are the, there are the you know, extended formations. Jellyfish looks something very similar to this image. Alright everyone, so here if we talk about, right, if we talk about the jellyfish galaxies so the space between the galaxies right in this galaxy cluster that is filled by something called as the intra cluster medium which is a very weak superheated plasma so plasma what is this plasma the fourth state of the matter okay the fourth state of the matter so basically all the superheated stars or the intra galactial intra galactial spaces or intra, intra cluster medium, all these might be in the plasma state of the matter. Okay, so here when the galaxies move through the uh, galaxy clusters, they force themselves through this medium. Why so? Why so? Because of the because of the excessive space present there. Okay, so the intra cluster medium that strips the gases from the galaxies, which is why which is why this gaseous trail, this gaseous trail is actually visible along the galaxy. Got it? So it is something like that. Suppose if the burning galaxy is going and uh, due to the presence of the you know, intragalactial or intracluster medium, the escape of gases that produces the effect of a trail, effect of a trailing, trailing shiny string of the stars. All right? The tendrils of the jellyfish, what are the tendrils? Tendrils basically the, you know, the fine threads which are coming out of the jellyfish, the thread-like, you know, structures. So, the tendrils of the jellyfish are important because they allow the astronomers to study the star formations in the extreme conditions, alright. Because as you can see, the core of the galaxy is here, but the tendrils which are coming out the tendrils which are coming out, okay, these are the tendrils which are coming out. So, these provide us 
the scientists they provide the scientists the opportunity to study the stars which are very very remotely located and at the same time they are the part of this setup this system of the galaxy so if even if we come uh, to know about the pattern about the character of one star from that galaxy at least we can have some data to understand the origin of that particular galaxy which is located quite far away from our planet all right everyone so i think uh, this is the information that we are having today all right everyone and in this session i hope that you would have got the five different news and you would have also earned some perspective about the scientific news or the discoveries in the recent uh, week apart from that if you are willing to enroll yourself for the proper preparation in the specific in the specific uh, guidance of our experts so basically this is the time to enroll because we are launching the new batches from the 19th of june and what do you have to do what you have to do basically you have to get yourself registered through the application if you have not downloaded the application download it and select your course and use the code asr live then you will get 29999 rupees only for your courses so all right everyone let's meet in the class on the 19th of june till then take care everybody bye bye and let's meet in the next week with the next five top news from the field of science and technology and if you love this session do not forget to share this video with your friends as well because these science news are basically very very crucial as they cover up a very important part in the upsc prelims as well as mains examination so thank you so much for watching it take care guys bye bye and have a great day ahead jai hind